Good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today, I'm very privileged to have Rene Russo with me. Rene is a certified EOS implementer based out of Canada um, and really great to have you on with us this morning. Thanks for having me here. Oh, absolute pleasure. Hey, Rene, I'd love to get a little bit of a sense of who you are and what you've um, sort of become on your journey throughout life and business. So would you mind sharing with us your story so far and perhaps a professional and personal best like you like to do in EOS? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, well, I grew up in Melbourne, Australia, in a very humble, hardworking, um, middle class family. My parents had uh, a couple of jobs, um, you know, providing opportunities for my brother and I. And so early on, I learned the importance of hard work and discipline. Um, I happened to be good at numbers at school and the teachers said, you should become an accountant. And because my parents had not finished high school, I really didn't understand what a lot of professions were. Um, and so followed that path and found myself at KPMG where I began my professional journey. And as I bounced around the firm and worked in and out of businesses, I realized that I loved the inner workings of the business and the people more than I liked the general ledger. So I pursued the path of people, became an HR professional recruiter as well as advisor. Um, and in that started to learn the real power of the human potential in businesses. Uh, around that time, I also married a visionary entrepreneur. Uh, he was Canadian born and raised. And so I took a leap of faith and came out to Canada to begin my life with him. And what I realized was that in entrepreneurship, there was very little game plan and there was not really a known science around how, how to run a great company. Um, and so I watched my husband put more and more time and energy into the business and get over time less and less back. Uh, and something didn't add up. So uh, in a call to universe, my brother gave me a copy of Traction, which gave me you know, tools and disciplines and everything I needed to help stabilize the business scale it 30% uh, growth year on year, multiple locations, and actually have a life outside of it. And in that, I, can, <laughs> I realized that if we could do it, anybody could do it. And I discovered that you be could become a professional in helping people to transform their business and get everything they want from it. So that's what I do now. Perfect. Okay, yeah. and so typical vision where your husband would you say? Definitely, yeah. And okay. so... With that, you know, personally coming into my path as an integrator uh, implementer, I started to understand the integrator seat. So personally coming into understanding my role in my marriage and in my family and how I could capitalize on a lot of my natural abilities to be, you know, um, uh, you know, a great mother to my family uh, was very enlightening for me and a real highlight in my path. I didn't see myself necessarily as a parent uh, or having children. And then when I, I came into that opportunity to have three beautiful children, I came to understand my role uh, as the, as the, you know, the, um, the glue in my family, the one who makes sure that we're acting in a greater good. So that was a real highlight for me, becoming a parent and coming into my myself on a personal level. Uh, and in and around that time, I also started to unlock some superpowers professionally. Uh, and so re-entering the workforce after many years home with my children would have to be my per, uh, professional highlight. So motherhood and then coming out of that into the professional world uh, was my professional highlight for sure. So I'm very, very lucky to have had opportunities to experience both. Um, and now juggling the two of them prove, proves to be continue, uh, challenging and continues to be a little bit of a challenge, but rewarding nonetheless. So now with my uh, role as an EOS implementer, I can be the mom I want to be and the professional as well. Cool. Hey, tell me a little bit more about your superpowers. Oh, um, you, my high level of empathy and compassion and the ability to see the human in others with, with forgiveness and kindness. Um, you know, parenting taught me that. My yoga practice taught me that, that, uh, you know, this was really, I lead from the heart. And I found that it never really fails me. So leading with my heart, seeing the human the other, in others has allowed me to, you know, continue to thrive personally and professionally. And how did 
did you come to uncover that? Because, you know, often people struggle with, they do what they do because they were either told to or they have fallen into it and never really moved on. Um, obviously, you love what you do. That's very obvious. How did you kind of uncover those superpowers and discover the, the true women? Mm, yeah, well, in this work, I mean, as an EOS implementer, I had the pleasure of teaching, coaching and facilitating. And I've learned that I have the ability to, you know, manage a room and uh, with good facilitation, just like I would manage my household. Um, you know, the coaching piece, there's the consistent messaging, helping people see their blind spots and uh, that just natural empathetic maternal side of me allows me to uh, then, you know, take what I observe to, you know, warmly, communicating that to people and helping them grow and thrive. And then the teaching part, I feel what I love about the teaching elements of being an EOS implementer is that I learn too. And so I'm simultaneously the student and the teacher in the room. And I, and I love that. So yeah, I've been able to really celebrate things that I naturally gravitate to in, in my profession. It's amazing. Cool. I'm just, I'm just interested. So does your husband still have his own business? Is that still... He does, yeah. Um, Photocopier and IT business. Fantastic. And so when you implement a video, I mean, people often think that um, you know, they, they go into business because they're really passionate about what they do. They want to grow it, usually to get more freedom, more money, more time. And often, mm -hmm. like you said, it gets busier and busier and they have less and less freedom, less and less time, and often less money as well. So what were the kind of the key challenges that you managed to uncover going through the EOS process and how did you overcome them? Mm hmm. Oh, so much in there. Um, so, yeah, we my my husband founded the business and had great dreams and ambitions, but was not able to communicate that to other people and help align them around that. And so what he didn't realize was that so long as the vision was in his head, it was never going to become a reality. Uh, and so in this work, you know, I realized that was a challenge and then this op beautiful opportunity with the EOS framework to get very clear on the vision and share it with everybody. So that was really great um, and needed, needed, very much needed. And the, the thing about small business, when you found it, you get very stuck in the day to day and you lose perspective on it. Um, and he was so in, in the weeds of the business and entrenched in every aspect of it. He had a hard time developing the structure and, and then also the trust to delegate things to other people and trust that they would do their work. And so this gave organizational transparency and accountability that he could then hold people to those expectations. Uh, he could get clear on those expectations and frankly get more of people doing what he wanted uh, and needed to make the go uh, world go around. But I feel like it's the dream that, ch that entrepreneurs are chasing into their business and seldom do they realize the dream while they still own the business. And the, the power of starting to actualize the vision is like a dream coming true. And so you need to be able to share that vision and have the right people to then make it a reality. And I feel that these challenges were not just present in our business, but in every entrepreneurial business that I start working with. Um, and so that's been clarifying that we it wasn't just us. We didn't just suck ourselves. We didn't know any better because we didn't have a playbook. And now we do. Awesome. And so you've been implementing now for how long? Uh, this coming February will be my fourth year. Excellent. So you obviously work with a number of different clients, no doubt. Do you have a favourite sort of type of industry that you like to work with or what's your view on? Uh, yeah, um, there's not, I mean, there are, I mean, home services is one of the industries that I'm fascinated by, you know, your furnace, your plumbing, your, you know, central cooling and heating and things like that. Um, that, that demand continues to increase over time. And so it's a business that has a lot of upside potential. And I'm always curious, though the demand continues to increase, why they don't scale and, and revolve through those ceilings. And so EOS has helped unlock a lot of that potential and helped my uh, home services company get to the next level. Every industry has its, you know, its uniqueness and gift, and that's what keeps me coming back to my work. I work at the moment across 23 different industries. 
with clients. So that means that, and, and then I've got some depth in the uh, home services, but that means I'm getting insights into all these different industries, which then I can start to connect the dots and share some of that insight across industries who never thought about, you know, what they could learn, a marketing company could learn from an HVAC company or a plumbing company, or what a construction company could learn from, um, you know, uh, like a retail store, there's not a lot of cross industry learning that takes place. And so, yeah, that's what I really love <laughs> about this work. I must admit, I had the same kind of um, situation when I was at the Ice House. I worked with both startup businesses and established businesses. And what I found was that there were so many learnings that both could take from each other. And so by working across the broad range of, you know, sizes, startup through to established, but also across different industries, gave me a great chance, yeah, as I said, to learn and share with other clients as well and some of the mm-hmm. EOS, yeah. So yeah. Um, tell me about your your um, best kind of, what do you call it, success story, I guess, with an EOS client. Mm. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I, I started to work with a beverage canning company during COVID because a lot of the breweries were not selling to restaurants anymore. They would sell direct the market in can so client of mine uh was happened to be in that space already a high demand industry um but they were not immune to covid and though the business was thriving the human elements of what was taking place were real you know the ability for people to work to access childcare, to you know the safety levels around showing up to work um And so watching them navigate through that and continue to stay strong and steady throughout uh, has been fascinating. They have also simultaneously gone through the challenges of of, uh, COVID and exponentially grown revenue. And so watching them not only manage, but also scale and continue to use the EOS tools to adjust at every stage of that rapid growth uh, has been really powerful to watch. Um, so it can help, EOS can help with the challenges you're experiencing, you know, because of complex external factors, but also, you know, rapid scale. So watching that duality take place has been amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, so many others, you know, uh, an automotive, uh, company, a, a dealership, they had silos across, uh, sales and service and parts, and there was a lot of tension and now they move as one unit and in that industry those silos are pretty deeply entrenched and watching them overcome that and come together as one team has been amazing so do you have a favorite eos tool i know that you know there's a few in the toolbox is it a favorite one for you um well i would say two like the level 10 agenda you know i I don't know if i could ever go to a meeting without an agenda now and nor do can my clients tolerate that so we're turning you know bad meetings around and that whether you're using eos as a system or just that tool alone you can get a lot of you know uh wins on the board with very little effort Uh, And the people analyzer, like I mentioned, some of my clients were in downturn during EOS, uh, during COVID, and then others were in upswing. But that tool is like a market, you know, uh, independent, agnostic, because, uh, and whether you're in upturn or downturn, it can be used in both ways. So what types of people are we going to add to our employee base? And what types of people do we need to let go of when we need to scale back or just because we need to make changes as a business? So it's powerful and it really creates some level of objectivity around a very otherwise uncomfortable and subjective topic, which is human performance in the business. And so when we're really looking at their alignment and how well they live the core values alongside how they're technically performing in in the work, we can get to the root of a lot of issues and have more confidence around acting on those and also make better hires when we're bringing people into the business. So it's a cost saving tool. It reduces the complexity and allows us to make uh, people uh, decisions more confidently. I must admit, the level 10 meeting tool, like you said, even if you're not using EOS, bringing that structure into a meeting tool just makes such a big difference. And I was talking to a client the other day who basically shared with me they have reached um, 50% on top of their target already and they're only a few mm-hmm. months into the year. And I asked them what, I, what they thought had actually created that. And they said the level 10 meeting tool has just kept them really focused. 
And so mm -hmm. now that all the projects that they found the go for a long, long time, it never quite got finished, are actually being completed. And that is leading to um, increase in sales and also productivity. So it's amazing how a very simple tool really um, can make such a significant difference. Absolutely. Yeah. And the I love people it. analyze, I mean, I, I know that you know, hiring on value is, is important, but it's difficult sometimes to do that. That gives you a really great tool to make sure you are doing the right thing, as well mm -hmm. as letting go of the wrong people, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the when uh, Seattle um, was closing down, my one of my clients has five coffee shops there and they needed to go down basically to skeleton staff like they've never seen before. And the first tool instinctually that yeah. they got out was a people analyzer. They just knew that they needed to use it more with more scrutiny than ever before. And then those people have ridden out the storm and now continue to stay with them. Hey, look, I always like to um, share some tips with our listeners because I want them to be able to walk away, not only inspired by your story and your help, but to actually go and do something quite practical, quite pragmatic. So what would you say are the sort of three top tips you could share from your experiences, either with your husband's business or as an implementer, that the listeners could, could take on board? Yeah, great. Um, I always think in threes anyway. I have three kids and I, my idea is coming three, so <laughs> that's a perfect number. Um, <laughs> The, I think the first tip is the power of focus, just getting very clear where you want to go, getting really clear on that, being able to see it and name it, like being able to write out what your life looks like three years from now or what the year looks like at the end, uh, end of this year uh, is really powerful because when you can then start to manifest the actions around executing on that. So focus is important to be able to see where you want to go, but also be very specific around what you're going to do and what you're best at. And so for, for me professionally, I've been able to identify what I'm good at and what I'm not and put that to work every day. And in businesses, when you can get focused around what you're best at um, and can be best at the world in the world at, you can create really powerful focus. You put all your energy into that and you know you have more power. So focus is key. Uh, discipline, you know, the only person who can truly hold you accountable truly is yourself. And so making commitments around discipline, just like we do, you know, with fitness and health, it's the same in your profession, in your business. So first of all, instilling good discipline in the way the, you as an individual show up um, and having integrity around holding good discipline and being your best self. But then in the organization as well, creating that heartbeat of good discipline in the business is essential for, sustain, for sustainable growth and good momentum. Um, and the last one is believing, you know, I always say the only difference between those who do and those who don't is those who believe they can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I spent a lot of my uh, early years, you know, looking for other people to believe in me. And as time has gone by, I realized that I just need to believe in me. I need to decide. I need to be willing to give myself permission to thrive. I need to believe in myself first. And in that, you unlock all this potential, all this fear mentality starts to go away and you've got this deep rooted belief in what you're capable of. Um, and that certainly has you know, helped myself and a lot of people that I coach get to their next level of performance through just simply believing that they can. is a cat feeder deciding to feed the cats right in the middle of our podcast ah. <laughs> well fortunately it was there was a pause was there. that's good <laughs> oh, it's all it's all good it's one of the joys of um, that recording from home okay so i suppose one of the things that i have found over the last you know 12 months with covid and what's going on a lot of people seem to be sort of really trying to fight fires and maybe not finding the time to do some of the things that you talked about the focus the clarity the um, finding their self-belief what would you suggest that they do how do they lift themselves out of the weeds or out of the firefighting to actually take the time to to do the stuff that is really important mm -hmm. yeah i mean i feel that there's three parts to that uh some kind of a coach who you have a structured relationship with that really kind of holds you accountable to stepping back from your world and getting some clarity around it and taking ownership and things like that so coach is important peer group 
you know, you can save yourself a lot of time and effort uh, making the same mistakes that your peers are making when you actually have a structured peer group environment for shared learning. Um, and then you can gain insights that you wouldn't re have read in a book or maybe necessarily experience on your own. Uh, and then a good system around um, doing that work, stepping out of the business to work on it. So an operating system that drives a discipline and that instills it in the business is powerful. Um, and if you don't have the operating system like EOS in place, you can certainly just create a more structured approach to literally stepping out of the business, taking a clarity break, you know, getting clear and objective, or taking your leadership team out of the business so that you could all gain that clarity and objectivity. So those are the kind of three success factors, I think. So what does this next year hold for you? Well, um, yeah, I'm really enjoying my work as an EOS implementer coach. And so I'm taking on a new batch of uh, implementers to coach. So taking my coaching up to a whole new level, which inspires me and keeps me learning. So like the teacher and the student piece there. Um, my practice is strong. There's a little bit of a, you know, a, a movement of the tide in with EOS clients every two years. And so some of my relationships with the existing clients are starting to come to an end and I'm taking on some new opportunities. So it keeps me fresh uh, and excited about the future as I start to then, you know, proudly, you know, graduate some clients as well. So a bit of a change. Back to is that, you know, our whole purpose is not to be there forever. It's to help them get to a point where they can graduate and they can do it by themselves. And that must be a great feeling once you get to that stage with them. Yeah, and more structured free days, um, planning to take more blocks of time, having the right team in place around me allows me then to step back from my business and have a vacation. So some more structured vacations and a bit more travel. It's been a while. It has been a while, hasn't it? So that's great. Hey, look, so if anybody wants to get in contact with you, um, I guess around either using you as an EOS implementer or even talking about your coaching, how would they get hold of you, Renee? Well, there's a few means to do that. You could e uh, email me um, uh, directly um, and you know, details could be provided after today. You can follow me on my website, which is riseupbc.com. And my social profiles are Renee Russo EOS. So social media, I'm very active and uh, have a, like, quite uh, a range of amazing conversations every week in that space. So that's a really quick and easy way to uh, reach out. But then lastly, the EOS Worldwide directory um, is a really great place, eosworldwide.com. You can find not just me, but the rest of my implementer community, including Deborah, on there. And so a really powerful way to, you know, reach out to us as a community. Hey, look, I really appreciate you taking the time. I'm not quite sure what time is it over there at the moment. It's 3.30 in the afternoon, the day before you. So yours one Monday. Okay, well, you have a fantastic rest of your Monday. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. Um, Thank and you. I'll look to catch up with you again soon. Awesome. Thank you so much.